The Basketball Hall of Fame 60 Days of Summer is your chance to see your favorite basketball stars live and in person. Check hoophall.com for a complete list of all these exciting appearances and plan your trip today. Number 99. Yeah. You're one of only three Celtics ever to wear it. How did number 99 come about for you in the Boston Celtics uniform? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 99 problems. Well, I was, <laughs> when I got traded, I was number nine, as you guys would know. And Rondo was number nine as well. And I did, out of respect from him and his career here in Boston, I didn't want to get his number. <clears throat> I'm already traded for him. So I wanted to start new, start fresh. And I decided to, to go with 99 problems, uh, double the trouble, I guess I was telling myself at the time. And then I came up with 99 problems, and it just took off from there. But that's how I came with the thought process. I just wanted to ch uh, a, a different number, a change of scenery. I love it. Thank I you. love it. I appreciate it. Now, here's, here's a question, too. From the outside, for all the Celtic fans out here, uh, and I know there are many. We heard from them a little while ago. They were making a lot of noise. From the outside, it looks like this Boston Celtics team is having so much fun. <laughs> what makes this team so different from the other NBA teams that you've been a part of? What makes this locker room, the yeah, culture of this team, so so different? <clears throat> it's the locker room. Is it? Uh, it's, that's all it is. It's, 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 it's first, first, the front office bringing in high quality players with great attitudes. I think you gotta, you gotta have that, and guys willing to have fun and, and, and mingle with one another, because that's not how it is on every NBA locker room, as we all know. But uh, it starts with the with, with the guys in the locker room. We just we just want to have fun with one another, and I think it shows on a night in night basis that we're having fun and when we're on the court with each other. Uh, we grow with each other. We go through bad times and good times with each other, and we embrace it. And I think that's what that's what a signs of a good team is. Absolutely. And, yeah. and and when when did you realize? So you get traded here midseason. A big. I mean, one of the big trades of that season was the one that brought you and Jameer mm -hmm. to, I'm going to say us. That's yeah. the only profession in the world yeah. where someone like me can be like, hey, great job. We did great last yeah. night. I had nothing to do with that. it. Right? It's the only Everybody profession. Of, no one does it for me. Hey, hey, we taught a good class we, yesterday. No yeah. one says that. No one. When did you realize that this could be the team that helped shape the culture in the NBA, because that's what's happening right now. Guards are getting bigger, forwards are getting yep. smaller. There's yep. a lot of guys on this team that can play both ends of the court. When did you realize that this might be that team? Uh, probably the end of the first year I got traded here. The end of how we ended the last two months of the season was, was bar nine. And I think every, the, the last two months of the season, no one envisioned us being in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, the Eastern Conference was a very down, down year that year. And, it was a big drop from three to, to eight. And um, we had it, we put together, we put together a great two months at the end of the season and we made the playoffs. And that's what I knew, like, just tasting that, you, you put these guys together again, we're gonna get back here and then you gotta keep building, keep growing. I think that's my first time knowing that we had something special that, for that last two months of the year I got traded. Now, let's just pretend no one else is listening. This is just you and me talking right. here. Everyone, every fan base likes to say theirs is the one that shows up in bad times and in good. Mm -hmm. But just between you and me, things got awesome quick, right? I mean, it was sort of a, the, the beginning of that first season. You know, people were excited, but when things started clicking, the garden really started responding, didn't it? Yeah, I, when I came, we were on a, a major losing streak. Yes, <laughs> yes. And... Um, the garden was very dead. And I remember coming to practice one day after losing like three in a row. And the guys were very down and, and we were all down. And I just said, we got to play for, start playing for one another more. And we got to start doing stuff for one another. I think we were still trying to play individually and it was, it was hurting us at the time. And once we started buying into one another and letting one and playing for one another, we started winning. That's not a coincidence. It's, no, it's not, it's not. So it's an we, easy game, right? Exactly, once, we, <laughs> once you do stuff like that and um, once I saw it turn around, of course, the garden lit up, the city lit up. Everywhere I go, people wanted to talk and, and, and started to recognize who I was as a player. And I think that all comes with winning. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's, what, that's what came from, from us gelling together was winning. And that's what it's all about. I just want to let everyone know that in about 15 minutes, we are going to give uh, four people a chance to ask Jay Crowder uh, a question. So if you okay. have something you've always been wanting to ask Jay Crowder, um, we will be typically when there's not... 500 people here, 
We'll just say, everyone ask a question. But today, we're going to, I hope you understand, we'll ask people in about 15 minutes who have a question to raise your hand. And one of the great Who Paul staffers will recognize you, stick you in a line over here, and you can get a chance to ask Jay Crowder a question. So that's coming up. Just start ruminating that in your head. <laughs> what were your, so again, uh, Brad Stevens and I, same age, yeah. which in my mind is super young. Yeah. I just want you to know I that. I agree. So, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew we'd be best friends. No, I agree. Uh, what were your first interactions like with Brad? Uh, were, were the, was, did he address you and, and Jameer and all the guys right when you first got there? Or was it like a open the briefcase, let's get to work type of uh, atmosphere? Well, we, had, we all had one-on-one meetings with, it, meetings with him once we arrived in Boston. And mine was very, very um, in-depth and in detail of what he wanted me to do for him as a player. Yeah. And I think that's what, as a head coach, that's what you need to do for a player. You need to let him know what you envision him doing and what you want him to do on a daily and nightly basis. And I think that's what he did first and foremost. I didn't know he was so cool, calm, and collected as he is when I first got traded here. And um, that, blew, that blew me away yeah. of, of how he holds his composure during up good times and bad times. He's just always even kill. That, that really showed me like he's a different type of coach and he really uh, embraces what he what he brings, and he's very in depth and detail, and he's very just cool, calm, and collected, and, and never never sweats. It's such a, a hallmark of this team. It is. It it's really. a reflection of him. It's it, all a reflection of him. For I, real? I, yeah, he's a great guy, and he he only wants to coach great players who yeah. has great attitudes. He's like he always says something about great players don't always have great attitudes. That's the way it is. But he want to coach the ones that he really. Loves coaching, yeah. and I think, and, that, and it shows a reflection of, of who he is as a person. Now let's back up uh, about six years. We'll go a little six farther. Years? Whoa. Six. I know. I know. Sorry. Okay, let's back up. I want to go back. I want to really tell the story of Jay Crowder here okay. because Jay Crowder's story. Grow up um, just west of Atlanta, sort of between Atlanta and Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Your pops, professional basketball player. Yeah. Jay Crowder, football player. <laughs> really, I mean, just a multi-sport athlete. Uh -huh. But your dad. As a professional basketball player, basketball is clearly something that you love. But at six foot six, I mean, this is—I mean, you're six foot six now. So, grow, growing up, was it difficult as a, with a professional basketball player as a pops being a little bit undersized? Oh yeah. Yeah. Every when I was growing up, everything was compared to him. Yeah. I didn't like it at first. Then I embraced it, and that's when everything changed. I can't—you can't fight that. I can't fight that. That's my dad, and he's the NBA. But you know what I mean, I couldn't fight that. So. I had to grow up and, and, and embrace it. And either I was going to be something like him or I wasn't. But where I'm from, he's such a big deal. He was yep. such a big deal at the time. It was a little pressure. I'm not going to lie. And it used to get to me. But as I got older and when I got to high school and once he started talking to me as a man, I started to really realize it and embrace it. And that helped me pro to propel into the guy I am today. Yeah. It helped me go work. It helped me go get out and do, try to be something. And, and, and that drive, yeah. again, the drive wasn't something that was rewarded right away. Right. You, you had two years at two different junior colleges uh, to, to, to really prove yourself and to, sh to, to put on some man weight yeah. to, to, to develop your game. Were those two junior college years at two different junior colleges, were, was that a, the, the biggest test of patience that Jay Crowder has had? 100%. Yeah. 100%, I would say that because <clears throat> it was always a a difficult situation. It was never easy. And I, not, not to say that I wanted it easy, but for a 19, 18 year old kid, it was very tough for me to adapt at times. But my father was always there. Yeah. 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 So that's when he came back to play and he helped me through the whole process. And without him, I wouldn't be here today, to and be now, honest with you. And now Buzz Williams makes the call for Marquette. I saw a Marquette shirt out here. He's right is back it? there. There's a Marquette shirt. Want to raise your hand, sir? The one with, there is. Oh, I see him. There's... Okay, I see you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so Buzz Williams calls for Marquette. And that team, I mean, going back to those teams with Jimmy Butler, Vander Blue, Darius Johnson Odom, who I got to know pretty well when he was yep, playing here yep. with the Springfield Armor. Yep. Those teams were ridiculous. Right. I mean, and they were all comprised very similar to this Boston Celtics team. Right. Guys who could play the full length of the floor. Guys well, who that's were, the way the league is turning turn, turn into now, and that's crazy because we played that way in, in college. We played very small. We played me at the four, and Jimmy Butler, as you guys know from the Chicago Bulls, he played the five. Uh, we were very small, as you can see, but we, we, we were one of the best Big East teams in the, in, in the whole um, league. So uh, Buzz plays a unique style of basketball. I knew he was a hard-working uh, type of coach. 
And the reason why I chose him is because he sounded much different from all the other 18 coaches that wanted me to come play for their school. He actually said, I'm going to have to work for my position, which is that's realistic. I, have, I had learned to, to embrace work at that point in yeah. my, uh, my life and career that I chose him. It's, it's, it's excellent, too, because, you know, your, your career and your background is also a testament to work off the court, right? I mean, you have your degree in communication yeah, disorders, yeah. which is not a, if I can use a basketball reference, that's not a layup of a no. study. <laughs> I mean, you were... It was you, tough. Yeah, uh, you were it going... It was tough, but I, well, like I said, I, I really put my mind to it. I had already been through a lot of difficult times, so once I got to school and, and got into school, I said, I'm going to do the work. I'm, I'm here. Uh, so I embraced everything, and I was able to, to get that degree, and I was very, to my mom and dad, proud. 2012, you are named the Big East Player of the Year in what I consider the final year of the Big East, if I can just throw that out there. Uh, I would agree. Yeah. Was that the moment that you realized that Jay Crowder had arrived in the eyes of others, that Big East Player of the Year? Yeah. Yeah. I knew at yeah. that moment. And, and then we, we fast forward to the draft. And that draft night must have been, I mean, you and... Oh, I was going through it. I was on pins and needles. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> thinking that I was going to the Boston Celtics. Well, they chose Fab Mello. And Jared Sullinger. And Jared Sullinger. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really, because I had worked out for Boston. And um, I had a good relationship with Doc Rivers. He went to Marquette as well. Yep. And I remember my, my workout. I crushed it when I came and worked out for Boston. And I remember going home and calling my agent like, ah, I think Boston might That's draft it. me, okay? They got two draft picks in the first round, blah, 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 blah. So we were waiting on draft night, and they take Fat Miller and Jared, and I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know where I'm going now. It's like everything's out the window. Uh, but then our draft was so deep with, with good talent. As you, Draymond Green, as you guys know, he was drafted one pick after me, and – we can go on, Chris Middleton, we can go on down the line of guys drafted after me who's really our NBA starters to this day. And we were, I think that draft was one of the deepest drafts you, you will see, um, especially in the past five years. For sure. Um, but it, it, it was a very rocky road for me up until that point. But when I got Big East Player of the Year, I knew I was an NBA basketball player. And I didn't, but when I got to the draft process, I didn't know where I was going to go. It was like a toss up. I've got two questions left for Jay Crowder, after which I'm going to ask for those of you who would like to ask uh, a question to raise your hand and be recognized uh, by the Who Paul staff. Uh, and then following that, we're going to have the autograph session. I want to remind everyone the entrance to the autograph session is sort of underneath those hoops way in the back. So we're going to ask with as many people here as, as, as there are for people to, uh, to, to move that way and to get, in, to get yourself into those single file lines. You're traded on, on draft night, which has to be yet another C crazy, they don't prep you for that during draft prep, do they? No. How, how did you find out about the trade? Uh, my phone started ringing. It was a Dallas, Texas number, and I picked it up. Really? And mid while hugging my mom, it was Mark Cuban. And he was saying, we just, we just traded for you. You're going to be a uh, Dallas Maverick. I was like, okay. <laughs> I just talked to the Cleveland GM, too. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'm a Dallas Maverick now. So um, then I see it on the TV. Then it came up on the TV, and um, it was just very uh, – everything was going at 100 miles fire at that moment. I bet. My family was going crazy. I was going crazy. And then I got a call saying I was going to another team, and I went crazy again. <laughs> you were really drafted twice, essentially. Yeah, I was. yeah, Yeah, yeah. So my final question for you, Jay. Here we are in Springfield, Massachusetts, sitting in the Basketball Hall of Fame – Underneath the faces of so many who have contributed throughout the century plus of this game, what is it like to have these Hall of Fame eyes and these Hall of Fame fans and for you to be speaking here where the game was born? Being a kid where I, where I grew up, I would have never thought I'd be here, to be honest with you. But um, I still don't think it's real, real sometimes when I wake up because I've came from so far. And a lot, not a lot of people said I could, I, I could have got here, but I believed in myself from day one, and I believe in hard work, and I'm very humbled to be able to, to come and speak here, and I appreciate you guys bringing me. I'm, I'm very humbled to have fans like you guys to come, come see me. I really, I really appreciate it, but as a kid growing up, I would have never thought I would be here, to be honest with you. And I, every day I wake up, I just take everything in. I never take a day for granted. 
and I just try to smile and, and, and because at the end of the day, I never thought I'd be here, so it, things could be much worse. So I just smile through everything, through anything. I never try to have a bad day. I just try to smile and just try to you know, let, let, leave it all out there because I would have never envisioned this happening. I never, me talking to people, I never envisioned people coming to want to see me. And I mean, stuff like that still blows me away, but it's still the little things that I, as a kid, I envisioned I wanted to be. And I made, I made that happen. It's just like a dream come true for sure, for real. From your fans, I think I can say that's why people wear the Jay Crowder jersey, because that joy comes out uh, for, for, uh, yeah. on the court, off the court, and that's what makes it such a pleasure to watch Thank you. you. So I'm going to ask, uh, first of all, a round of applause for Jay Crowder. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. We hope that it won't be the last time you're here in Springfield, and no pressure to y'all, but I'm going to take four questions from you. So if you have questions for Jay Crowder, raise your hand, keep it up, and you'll be recognized by one of the Hoop Hall staffers to put you in line over here. Did you know that you were one of only three oh people? God, look at my guy. What's Is up? This, this, stand up, stand up, stand up. This guy right here, y'all see right here? Every time I pull into the TD Garden for a game, every time, He's at the front. Him too. Stand up. Really? <laughs> Every time I pull up to the TD Garden for a game, these two guys right here are there. They got a lot of signed stuff from me. I signed a lot of stuff for them. They take care of me with little stuff they get. I really appreciate y'all coming down here, bro. That's what makes it worthwhile. Yeah. That's what makes it worthwhile. For sure. All right, let's take our first question. Here's what I'm going to ask. Be sure to tell Jay your name and where you're from, and then you may ask your question. Hi, I'm Skyler. I'm Hello. from Vermont, and I would like to ask, how did you feel about the Celtics before you joined them? Skyler said, how did I feel about the Celtics before joining them? Well, I felt like they're always the top-notch or organization with the championships that they had before I got here with the older players, and they, they have a lot of great players. So I knew the tradition was always one bar none. With Larry Bird, you can, you can name so many great players who play here. and. To be honest with you, like I said, I thought I was going to get drafted to Boston. So I wanted to come here originally. First, because Doc Rivers, me and him went to the same college. And of course, the tradition of, of winning championships in Boston. As a kid, everyone knew what that mean. LA, Boston, everyone knew that rival growing up. And I just wanted to be a part of it. Excellent question, Skyler. Thank you. Thank you. All right, same rule. Please give them your name, where you're from, and then you can ask your question. My name is Jaden. I'm from Massachusetts, and I would like to ask, who's your favorite friend on the Celtics? Who's my favorite friend on the Celtics? No pressure, Jay. That's tough. Well, Amir Johnson. Amir is a great guy. Me and him get along very well. Our moms get along very well, and we go on vacation together. So. That's my best friend. That's one of my best friends on the team, for sure. Uh, and I like, um, of course, I like Jonas Drepko. That's my other guy. Because he likes style, I like the dress and stuff, and he thinks he's European style, s Swedish sensation. <laughs> so he always talk about what I be wearing, and I talk about what he wears. He's, he's a very stylish guy, so that's my other guy. Great question. Thanks so much. We got some little little fans bringing the heat. Yeah. Bringing That's the heat. Tough question. <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from, buddy? Uh, my name is Elijah Lester. I come from Washington D.C. Mm. And my question would be to you: Who do you think is your biggest opponent? <clears throat> Toughest opponent. Toughest opponent. Yeah. Personally. Yes. Probably Kevin Durant. Probably. Because he's so tall. I know. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's so tall. He's seven feet tall. He moves just like me. He can shoot over me. <clears throat> he has every, all the tools on the offensive end that, that a player would, would like to have. And he's one of the best shooters in our league. And that's one guy I match up with every time. Of course, I can go down the line with a lot of great players, but he's one of the toughest. Thank you very much. And a DC guy, a DC area guy. You just gave a yeah, DC a answer. That's a DC guy, to a, right? Yeah, <laughs> to a DC guy. Yeah, I like that. He's a good player, though. Good job, buddy. 
And let's close it out nice and strong. How are you? Let's get your name, where you're from, and your question for Jay. My name is Olivia Kaplan. I'm from Florida. And my question is, how many um, baskets do you think you've shot? Well, I've been playing basketball since I was five years old. I mean, I was this tall. So I would say, shot, not made. <laughs> made? In the NBA. In the NBA, OK. <laughs> now we're talking. Uh, I would say, I would say 2,000? 2,500? I'll go with 2,500. Something like that. And you've got a good solid 10 years left, maybe 15 years. So we'll, we'll go with, there'll be about another, I'm no math magician, so but I'll, I think that's a million left. A, a million, I think so. I don't, yeah, I think so. <laughs> a lot, question. a lot. The question is a lot. <laughs> to answer that, a lot. Great questions. One more round of applause for Jay Crowder. Oh, do me a favor, do me a favor. I have Snapchat, so y'all can do a little Snapchat video for me. You see I'm doing? Snapchat. I appreciate all you guys coming out to see me today. Really appreciate it. All you guys in the back, too. Thank you.